We are given a system of linear equations with three variables x, y, and z. This, this, and this. You can also notice here that we have two other variables a and b, right? Now the question is simple. We want to find for which values of a and b there is no solution, exactly one solution, or infinitely many solutions. Generally, to solve such problems, people tell you to make an augmented matrix and find its rank and then compare it with the rank of the coefficient matrix to decide if the system has a unique, infinite, or no solution. But the way we are going to see it is simple and somewhat intuitive. We'll look at how one equation relates to another. Okay, before we start solving, let's understand what can happen with any system of linear equations. For the ease of explanation, Consider a system of linear equations with two variables x and y. Suppose the two equations are x plus y equals 4 and x minus y equals 2. What do you think just by looking at these two equations? Do they have a unique solution, meaning exactly one pair of x and y satisfies both equations? Or do they have infinitely many solutions, meaning both equations represent the same line? and every point on that line satisfies them? Or do they have no solution at all, meaning the two lines are parallel and never meet? In this simple case, these two equations represent two straight lines that intersect at one point, so there is only one pair of x and y that works, and this is called a unique solution. If both equations had been multiples of each other, like x plus y equals 4, and 2x plus 2 wide u equals 8. They would have represented the same line, and there would be infinitely many solutions, which means x equals 1 and y equals 3, satisfies both these equation, and x equals 2, and y equals 2 also satisfies both these equations. In fact, there are infinite such x and y pairs. But now, if one equation had been x plus y, equals 4, and the other is x plus y equals 6, the lines would be parallel, right? They will never meet, and we would say the system has no solution. Okay, now if this is clear, then how can we find this thing systematically? The answer lies in the determinant of the matrix. If we convert these two equations in a single matrix form, a times x equals b, then A represents the matrix of coefficients, meaning it contains only the numbers that are in front of the variables. The variable matrix X is simply a column with X and Y, and the constant matrix B is another column with these two constant values. Now, the determinant of the coefficient matrix A tells us everything about the type of solution the system will have. If the determinant of A is not zero, then the system is consistent and has exactly one solution. But if the determinant of A is zero, it means the two equations are either parallel, no solution, or the same line, infinitely many solutions. Let us check the determinant for all three cases. Determinants are easy to calculate, right? Here the determinant will be minus two, which is non-zero, and thus we have a unique solution for this case easy. Now, for both these cases, it is easy to check that their determinants are zero. If you don't know how to calculate determinants, then I have made a video on the same. Check it out later. Link is in the description. If one of the row in matrix A is linearly dependent on other rows, like for a 2 cross 2 matrix, we only have one other row, but for a 3 cross 3 matrix, we have two other rows. If one row is linearly dependent on the other two rows, then it means all the rows represent the same line or plane. In simple words, the equations are not giving new information. They are just repeats of each other. This makes the determinant zero, and the system can have either infinitely many or no solutions. Now, here comes the main trick. To find which one it is, we must also check the constants in matrix B. If the constants follow the same linear dependency as the rows in A, 
then both equations lie on top of each other, giving infinitely many solutions. But if the constants do not follow the same pattern, it means the lines or planes are parallel and will never meet, giving no solution. For this case, we have R2, or rho 2 equals 2 times R1, or rho 1, right? Now check for the constant B. We have R2, or 8 is 2 times R1, or 4, right? So this means the pattern follows, and thus we have infinitely many solutions here. But for this case, we have R2, or rho 2 equals R1, or rho 1, right? But there is no same pattern in the constants, like 4 is not equal to 6. Therefore, this system has no solution. Okay, before we proceed further, there is just one more terminology you should remember. That is when the system has a unique solution, or infinitely many solutions, which means it has a solution, then we call that system as consistent. Else, for the case of no solution, we call the system as inconsistent. Now, if this is clear, then it is very easy to solve the given problem. We are given this system of linear equations, and we need to find the values of A and B, for which there is no solution, exactly one solution, or infinitely many solutions. Okay, so the very first step is to convert this equation into the matrix form. We get this. Now the next step is to check the determinant of the coefficient matrix A. The determinant equals 1 times 5 times 3 minus A times 2 minus 1 times 2 times 3 minus A times 1 plus 2 times 2 times 2 minus 5 times 1. This simplifies to 15 minus 2, A minus 6 plus A plus 2 times minus 1, which further simplifies to this. So the determinant equals 7 minus A. Now, if the determinant is not 0, then the three coefficient rows are not dependent on each other or independent, and the system has exactly one solution for all real values of B. Therefore, whenever A is not equal to 7, the determinant is not 0 and the system has one unique solution regardless of B. Now, check the special case when A equals 7, because then the determinant is 0, and now we must dig deeper. Replace A by 7 here and write the three coefficient rows again. Since the determinant is 0, therefore we know that one of the rows of A will be linearly dependent on the other two rows. So we will make row 2 as linearly dependent on row 1 and row 3. Thus we write R2 equals alpha times R1 plus beta times R3, where alpha and beta are just constants. Writing that out component by component gives three small equations. Alpha plus beta equals 2, alpha plus 2 beta equals 5, and 2 alpha plus 3 beta equals 7. This is super easy to solve. Subtract the first equation from the second to eliminate alpha. Alpha plus 2 beta minus alpha plus beta equals 5 minus 2, which simplifies to beta equals 3. Put beta equals 3 into alpha plus beta equals 2. So alpha plus 3 equals 2, hence alpha equals minus 1. Now, check the third equation just to be safe. 2 times minus 1 plus 3 times 3 equals 7, so the third equation checks out. This means row 2 is minus row 1 plus 3 times row 3. Now, since the rows of A obey this relation, thus the rows of B must obey the same relation for the system to be consistent and to get infinitely many solutions. Substitute the actual numbers. We get 9 equals minus 6 plus 3 times B. Solve that by first adding 6 to both sides to get 15 equals 3 times b, and then divide by 3 to get b equals 5. Therefore, when a equals 7, you have two possibilities. If b equals 5, then the system is consistent, giving infinitely many solutions. If b is not equal to 5, then the relation fails, the system is inconsistent, and it has no solutions. So to summarize this, if A is not 7, then there is exactly one solution for all real values of B. If A equals 7, 
and b equals 5, then there are infinitely many solutions. And if a equals 7 and b is not 5, then there is no solution. See, it was super duper easy. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Also, you can support my channel by joining our community and becoming a member. So good!